Hello and welcome back. So it's finally time to move our project into its final destination, which is the, uh, what's this? The PHP desktop and then test things there, okay? So I'm going to close this window so we don't have to see this anymore. And then let me find where I have actually added my project. Um, where did I do the PHP desktop? That's where my point of sale. Okay, so this is the www folder and um, public folder. Okay, so this is the app in public folder. Nice. So now I want to copy my code. So I'm going to go to the index page, open containing folder. Okay, so this is the point of sale, public and app files. So I'm going to copy these folders, copy. Then I'm going to go to the WW folder, delete what's here, okay, and paste. So this folder that I'm in is my PHP desktop, right? PHP desktop folder where the, uh, the application is, and that's the WW folder, okay? So make sure you are there. So now that this is happening, I can now uh, open my point of sale from here. So open that. Okay, so let it load a little bit. Come on, come on, come on. Oh, access denied. Okay, so let me remove this uh, thingy here. Um, let me close this. So I'm going to drag my uh, WW folder into my project. And then let's change a few things, shall we? Let's go to the home controller. When we reach home here, uh, it's telling us to, if you're not a cashier, it's saying you need to be logged in. So instead of this, we just want to redirect, shall we? So I want to look at how I'm doing the redirect from the logout page, just like this. Copy that. And I will open the home page. And when you're not, you don't have access, just go to the login page. Save that. Okay, great. So let's try this again. I'm going to go to my folder, open that so that we are taken to the login page instead. Okay, so email at email.com and the password is password, enter. Okay, so now we have our point of sale here working very well. And then <clears throat> if I now uh, click on an item to add and let's try and print this, let's check out, now let's say, uh, Let's add a 60 there. Okay, so this is what happens here. Okay, so the receipt comes up there and then it asks me to, uh, to select a printer. XPS document write-up. So I don't know if any of these, uh, what does this one do? Ah, right. But anyway, you see the page was closed after, which is nice continue okay so right there you have to select your printer and put your preferences and then uh, save so let's try this again check out 100 and there we go so now the thing is you see as you notice the dialog box here is different for this program it's not the same as the new version of Chrome there this one is a dialog like this and then it's got preferences here if you click preferences right mm -hmm. and you can set your paper size and everything from here now the thing is what you have to keep in mind is that oh yeah so that's those are the preferences for the fax machine the only problem is if i set these preferences let's let me set this to that let's set something that we can remember this one is letter small so i've set it to that and i've set it to landscape let me say OK, and let's say print. Copies can't be, cannot be emptied, must be positive value. OK, number of copies, one. Eh, it's refusing. Let's go to preferences for this. Advanced. OK, so you can put your paper size here, depending on your printer and all that. Uh, but uh, the problem is, let's, let me put portrait here. There's landscape. Let me put portrait. Let me cancel, go back to preferences. Let me see. There's landscape. Let me put portrait. Let me see if those 
uh, settings will remain. Okay, so let's try again. Let's see if we'll get portrait again. So let me add that, check out 20, go. And let's select this one. Let's go to preferences. Okay, so there's portrait, it saves there. Now, what I'm trying to show here is that sometimes you set your preferences the first time and you find that each time you need to set the same preferences again, it's not saving. If that happens where the printer is not saving your preferences when you select them from here, it's not keeping those defaults. What you have to do is search for printers, uh, devices, and printers, or the printers and scanners, wait, devices and printer, devices and printers. Yes, that's the one. Oh, great. This, so I want to look for devices here, printers and scanners. This, this is good enough, I guess. Okay, so once you get to this section in your windows, you can set the defaults here. So if I go to this one and manage, and then I go to printer properties, then I can set the properties from here and these will be permanent. Okay, so keep that in mind. All right, so once we are done with this, <clears throat> everything is working as intended. Okay, so now just keep in mind that when you're editing, you want to edit anything from here, you have to do it in the WW folder here because you've moved your project now to the application folder of this. So you have to do things from there. Okay, and also the, <clears throat> the send keys, for example, we have to change that. Not in here. Let me close the files that are here. Keep in mind that we are using this folder now, so don't don't be editing files here and thinking things are not changing. So let's go to the views and let's print view right here. So here we have to change this. So instead of absolute, well, you know, actually this works just fine, really. Yeah, 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 actually it works just fine. Pretty cool. So we don't need this anymore. Uh, I was mistaken. This was a better solution, yeah? Because it doesn't matter where you put the file, it's just going to find the absolute path and add it there. So this is actually future-proof, so that's even better. So let's close that. And we are pretty much done, okay? So our project is now running and uh, everything is good. So uh, when it comes to installation on your, uh, on your client's computer, all you have to do is this. So let me show you this. So let's say now you want to transfer this to your client's computer. So all you have to do is copy this folder, okay? This is the PHP desktop folder copy it because it has everything you need. So just copy this to any location on that user's computer and then right click on this and create a, um, a shortcut, right? Create a shortcut to the desktop so that when they double click there, they're actually opening this uh, item here. And that's really all you need to do. That's the only installation that needs to happen. But also at the same time, you need to install ZAMP, okay? You need to install ZAMP because they have to be running ZAMP in order for, it's not, the ZAMP is not for the Apache, no. It's only for the MySQL. So even if Apache does not start, as long as MySQL is started, this is going to work. You can see that if I stop Apache right now, okay, but MySQL is running, you will notice that uh, this will still run. So let me close this and let me open that again. So as you can see, it's still running just fine email.com and password like that. Okay, so things are still running as intended because we are not using this Apache here on our system. We are using the PHP that comes with this software here. It's part of the software's folder. So you don't need that, but you need the MySQL. Now, there are times like me, for example, I really don't want to have a portable software like this and have to deal with installing XAMPP and MySQL at all. I dislike this because it makes it a dependence. But 
MySQL is more powerful than SQL light, so you may want to do it like this. But personally, what I want to do is I use SQL light instead as my database. Once I do that, then um, the database becomes portable. The database comes into, I can put the database in my folder right here as part of this so that when I go to the client's uh, thing, I just copy this folder to that particular, uh, I just copy this folder to the uh, user's computer or the client's computer. Now, already we have a lot of videos in this uh, series, so I wouldn't want to add more videos uh, unnecessarily. So if you really want me to show you how to remove this software from MySQL so that we use SQL Lite instead, you will let me know in the comment section and then we can add those videos there if need be. But for now, uh, this is all it is. Uh, everything is working fine and the software is done. So of course, like I say in all these series, if there's a uh, there's something I've missed. Of course, I'm not going to cover everything in this series. Some things will not work. Others will cause errors, etc. The point of this was to show you how to code so that you can figure out the solutions yourself if you want to add extra things and so on.